the Indie Film Festival kicks off with a bang, usually with the ever so famous, world renowned and arguably the greatest festival in the calendar, Sundance, hosted in the wonderfully pleasant Salt Lake City, Utah. But I have news for everyone planning a trip or expecting the usual film extravaganza. I thought it was unusually strange that when attempting to purchase tickets or getting anything Sundance related, I couldn't. And sadly, like last year, the event holders have cancelled the physical festival, and this year it will most likely be virtual or online. Sundance will not be in Utah again, but will be virtual, played at specific local art houses around the country. I would say at more COVID relaxed states. As for global viewers, again, it obviously is much harder or pretty much impossible to buy tickets as I've tried. So they broke the news on IndieWire and Chris Lindau states that the Sundance Film Festival has cancelled its in-person programming in Park City and will be an almost entirely virtual affair when it kicks off January 20th. Amid an unprecedented nationwide surge of COVID-19 cases, the festival on Wednesday announced that it will not take place at a physical event in Park City. Similar to last year's edition, the festival will host screenings and programmings online and an art house, or should I say at art house around the country. In 2020, the festival drew around an estimated 117,000 people from all over the country and Utah State is essentially afraid that the resurging case of Omicron is going to make things very difficult. I hope this will get better throughout 2020 and other festivals, particularly in the summer. So I will try and do videos to help and offer advice on what films to watch. However, just keep in mind that the home or local cinema our experience is a new revelation in the cinema space. I mean, all you really need to do is look at the likes of Disney Plus and their straight to home streaming method. This very well could be the future of cinema. So usually during my festival tours, I would talk tips, priority bookings, travel and specific live events like talks that might be worth attending. But all I can really offer is films that you should maybe look out for at Sundance. If you do get a chance to buy tickets or at like your local art house, for example, and of course, if any of these films filter through to other festivals that aren't so COVID, you know, restricted. And of course, you might even be seeing them at the Oscars as well. So a way to watch the films live is something called Satellite Screen Partners, which basically gives you seven independent art house cinemas across the United States. However, it does mention January 28th on them though. So I think this maybe is a closing event or the films might be only showed at closing times or sort of thing. And the satellite screens include the likes of Amherst Cinema in Massachusetts, Aperture Cinema in North Carolina, Digital Gym Cinema, San Diego, Indie Memphis, Memphis, Mama Film in Lawrence, and Northwest Film Foreign in Seattle, things like that. SNF Parkway in Baltimore. You do have places to go to go and see them. I'm not too sure about the ticket packages anymore. Um, it's they still involve like uh, individual tickets. However, I, like I said, I wouldn't hold my breath for any packages, passes. It might be something to double check, but don't hold your breath. So yeah, let's head towards the main section and I will explain. If we go on schedule, for example, you can see that if I, for example, go on like, like wherever civil, it's not in Utah screening times, but it is the Sundance Film Festival website. So they do have a lot of good information as to when you can watch it. Just check your local art house or the ones that I've pre uh, you know, previously mentioned to see if you can get tickets. So now onto the films. And this is one that just keeps popping up. It's called Phoenix Rising. It's about Evan Rachel Wood, star of Westworld, about the events of her real life and her real struggles of abuse and how after being denied help from a lawyer, she tries to actively change the law to get what she has been fighting for. Amy Berg, the filmmaker, I believe is a close personal friend and I would say it's a relevant time documentary if that makes any sense and who doesn't love a relevant documentary. You've also got Second Chance, which is Ramin Barain's, I think I've pronounced that right, his thriller tale about Richard Davis, who was the man behind the concealable bulletproof vest, and how his career was essentially almost completely derailed after a fatal accident for one of his users. I mean, I'm a massive fan of Ramin's previous films, 99 Homes, for example, was incredibly captivating. So if you were a fan of the Oscar nominated Carol, then maybe Cool Jane might be a film uh, for you to watch, written by Phyllis Nagy, or should I say directed actually? 
Uh, it's a fictional story based around the true events about a group of women starting the underground abortion clinic. Based in 1969 Chicago, I believe, and it's essentially what it did back then was turned the political spectrum around for women in the United States. And this is one that I'm particularly looking forward to seeing. The Exiles, which I believe is going to be one of the standout documentaries of 2022. Oscar-nominated director Christine Choi basically attempted to make this film about Tiananmen Square massacre. I believe that she couldn't do it though, she was stopped somehow, or disallowed, or whatever, but she's basically this time t uh, teamed up with two other filmmakers as she tracks down dissidents from the infamous hole in China's extremely long and at times smothered history. It's a dramatic event that did change the face of history and I just think that it is going to be a thrill ride for sure. So I believe this one is from Midnight and if you've seen my previous other videos then you know that IFC Midnight focuses on horror films. I've said this in previous tour videos as well that there's always a weird film that pushes the boundaries and i've seen one firsthand before sundance's newest weird entry is piggy directed by spaniard carlotta Pereda, it's been said to be a mix of i think between catherine brillat's fat girl and the texas chainsaw massacre where an overweight teenager is bullied right up until a serial killer enters the picture and the overweight teenager basically has a choice to make and you can see where this one's going anyway it's considered immersive and gruesome if that's your thing so i could ramble on about many more films but i just thought i would give you five or six i can't remember how many there were there of ones that i think are worth watching tickets are quite expensive so you are limited um it really is a shame about the in-person side of the festival being cancelled like it was last year but i do think again it did well but it just does lose that whole film festival vibe. I mean, it's an event rather than just a business. But you can understand why they're having second thoughts. Obviously, COVID has hit a lot of people hard, really. But yeah, again, it's just one of those festivals. It's, it's it, Sundance has that allure and it has that prestige and Utah's all around beauty as well. But at least we are still being treated to a mass of new independent films. And there is always 2023 for you film festival travelers. But just keep an eye out, purchase your local tickets and find out where to see these films. So please do like and subscribe if you found this video helpful. And remember that there are gonna be, throughout the year, there are gonna be more tours like this. I will be more in depth. This one's a bit vague, but hopefully in the future, these videos will be more clear. And on that note, Take care, everybody.